All right, when I look at when I look at this stuff right here, and yeah. like it, it looks kind of like uh, like a screen printing. Like there's different layers. You like what what goes into like the science of being able to like keep or like to use all these colors. And so I think that's what pops I mean, the most. I don't know. It's 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 basically it's all cuts and stuff. So like if this was like a, I'd put down like a this as like the primary area. Say like just this orange pot. Then I go in there and do like a real tight real tight area with just this little green, but then I would take the orange and go back, and it's the way you hold the cans. You can get like these almost like, uh, not necessarily pencil type lines, but like, um, you know, like shop lines like that. Because the can's actually spraying downward. So one pot's gonna be super razor clean, the other one's gonna fade down. So it's really all about how you, how you uh, position the can, what caps you prefer to use, and I mean, it's not like the 90s where you only had like, two cans and like two caps or whatever. So you learn how to get good with just the basic shit. Uh, Contrasting is a whole other ball game. I don't really know, uh, what's it called? I don't know, I don't really follow no color wheel or anything like that. I just kind of know what works with what from so many years of experience. Like if I put this here, then the green's gonna go here because the green contrasts with this. And then a the lighter green like that will contrast with a teal blue. Reds and greens, blues all go good together. Oranges, pinks, it's just, I, I can't even, it's too much to break down, but I just kind of know how to do it, man. I'm not even thinking about it. Uh, my earliest memories when I was a little kid, man, my mother used to, uh, instead of like making me watch TV, she put uh, pieces of paper in front of me. You know, or, or if I was watching TV, I'd have pieces of paper in front of me. But my mother had me taking like, uh, she put me in like painting, oil painting lessons when I was like eight years old. So drawing and like music kind of came natural to everyone in the family. I'm just, me and my uh, little brother, the only ones who've actually done something with it. So like as far as, I mean one of my uncles, uh, you know, he teaches some cartooning classes I guess and you know he plays the guitar and stuff. And me and my brother, my brother's an actor and I'm, I got more into the art thing. You'd think because I was tall I could play basketball good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but <laughs> this white dude definitely can't jump. <laughs> it's just big enough uh, to fit those five letters in and not have it be anything like uh, substantially crazy, which is good. If this was the winter time, we'd be in trouble. Right now, it, sh it should be fine, but I, I prefer concrete just because you don't have as many like layer issues and it absorbs partly into the cracks in the walls, so it's like a flatter thing. Because if you gotta go over something multiple times, sometimes you get this like blobby like drip section. You know, I'd rather paint concrete, but it is what it is. I can rock whatever. I always took music more seriously, but I started taking like drawing real seriously about 15 years ago uh, when I wanted to get into tattooing. You had to really get to a, you have to take it to a whole different level if you want to get into stuff like that. Because uh, when I realized I didn't want to live the life I was living anymore didn't want to wind up back in prison or anything like that. That's basically why. And I, I love doing it. It was like a no-brainer kind of thing. But graffiti's been something that's been... Ever since I seen that shit on the trains in New York in the 80s, movies like B Street and Break and really exposed it to places like where I grew up. Even more, I was just infatuated with it, man. It really was, like... I basically would just do a lot of stuff on paper. You know what I'm saying? And then work my way up but uh, you know how I created my style and and uh, painting was I just tried to I just tried to do a lot of experimenting man. I still try to uh, stick to the roots I still have some sort of old school foundations in my style because uh, it's the stuff I grew up on I try to keep that alive a little bit I'm trying to add some sort of new school flavor because a lot of uh, a lot of history is um, Forgotten by doing fancy, smashy art shit. Alright, so for people who don't know what it is like to live a life in art, you know, what can you tell me about the life in art? I mean, it has a lot of perks and it has a lot of struggles and stuff too. Uh, I mean, the struggles are, can be really tough, but but the perks are just ridiculous, at least for me. I've been in most parts of Europe and I really don't have to pay for much. What was I gotta say? I got friends all over the world because of it. You know, so I get a lot of perks, man. I get to do a lot. I've, I've done a lot of shit that normal people just won't get to do anyways. You know, you know, I don't, 
I'd rather go to a country and see it for what it is, not not go and then be stuck in a tourist trap. You know what I'm saying? I get to go see hip hop culture, what it's all about, like other countries, and how much more positive it is sometimes in the states. Uh, definitely, we take shit for granted over here. That's for damn sure. So, I mean, that's that's how I look at it, at least, you know. It'd be nice to be like, you know, if I was known as that dude from Boston or one of the dudes, you know, that, you know, he got out of his own city and, and you know, did something with it. Uh, yeah, like when you say, talk about Boston graffiti, my name comes up. Early 90s, there was a lot of the skateboarders and uh, hardcore and punk rock kids that were doing it. You know, kind of like New York. I mean, a lot of the graffiti writers were punk rock kids. They weren't just hip-hop kids, you know. But punk rock and hardcore culture and hip-hop culture are very similar. I just know that it was more raw when I was coming up. You know, I didn't have this fancy paint, which I'm definitely not hating on. But, uh, you know, dudes have it easy these days, man. We had to, you know, there was no internet. There was none of that shit. We had to pay dues. I got to be brought up the right way as opposed to the generic bullshit. And I don't want to sound like a, an older school miserable guy or whatever. I just don't, I think people uh, take what, what we used to do for granted. That's all. And generations change, obviously. But um, you don't have to put in the work like you used to. We need to have an open mind and be progressive about the stuff. Like, part, part of me doesn't like the fact that this, some of the stuff has gone kind of mainstream and, and it's still underground, but at the same time, this can open up doors for a lot of kids that don't have any direction or whatever. So I have no problem, you know, uh, being able to support this, being able to do something, get legal walls, do something, uh, open up classes or whatever, teach kids how to, you know, do this type of stuff, you know, because it opens up. This has opened up many doors for me in my life, so. Let me be, stay cruising like traffic, some wish I ain't moving. Why choose to make things more complicated? Like an alarm clock, I ain't snoozing. From a hood that I miss, but ain't never left. Dream of a moment I could spend without a credit check. Only real, could never be artificial. My future is, uh, whatever happens next. Never plan ahead, just enjoy today instead. Not an employee yet, wonder, but I'm making bread. I'm blessed knowing with it is to make ends meet that road goes no further dead end street whoever said i couldn't make it is a bunch of liars all lies on music's number one supplier gift that i'm born with you could never